My name is Kevin Regick, and I welcome you to my channel, Conversations from the Hot Box. Here we are passionate about discussing real-life issues, and I do so from a Christian biblical perspective. I believe that by sharing our experiences and insights, we can learn from one another and grow in our faith and understanding of God's Word. Today's conversation addresses the controversy surrounding some online uh, comments from Bishop uh, Clarence McClendon regarding Pastor Jamal Bryan of New Birth Missionary Baptist Church and Vice President Kamala Harris. At the start of this conversation, you know, uh, I, I felt myself becoming angrier and angrier as I was listening, uh, trying really not to engage with, it, uh, with the individuals uh, that were there. Uh, then I had just had enough and, and had to start participating. <laughs> but because I didn't want to fully engage in this conversation in anger, uh, uh, I, I kind of held back uh, and put this together to share with them and with you three days, three days later. Uh, but funny thing is now, three days later, I'm completely frustrated with all the social media comments and so forth I've been seeing behind this particular uh, event. Also, I do my best to avoid uh, criticizing other Christian, particularly Christian leaders, directly on social media. However, uh, the bishop presented it on social media. So I opted to give myself some time to settle down, to, to pray, uh, and to get my facts together and actually get some counsel as well. And in lieu of all of that, with all the gag, it's my support. Let's ride. Bishop Clarence McClendon made some outlandish uh, statements from his pulpit during the service. He attacked Pastor Jamal Bryan of New Birth Missionary Baptist Church for having Vice President Harris as his guest and to share with his member. Now, I'm not a member of New Birth Missionary Baptist Church but neither is the bishop. And I just feel that Pastor Brian can invite whoever he wants to his church that he is leading. And the bishop can invite anybody, whoever he wants to his church. The outrage seemed to have stemmed from accusations that she's against Christians. But that still doesn't grant the bishop the right to rebuke Pastor Jamal openly on social media. Can I take it a step further? To all the pastors who say that they want a president who can and will adhere to biblical principles, to you I say then you need to start a Christian political party. And, and that you need to rewrite the Constitution of the United States because according to it, this is not a Christian nation. And it doesn't matter how many times you say that it is. In the federal government, in order for an official to take office, he or she must first take an oath of office. This is known as a swearing-in ceremony. The official reciting the oath swears an allegiance to uphold the Constitution, not to uphold the Bible, not to uphold the Quran, not to uphold the Torah, not, not to uphold Christian principle, uh, what they think is right or wrong. When a president takes the oath of office, he or she doesn't swear to be the president to just Christians or Muslims or blacks or white or males or females. They take an oath, something that the adherence to should be important to us as Christians. They take an oath to be the president to all the people. That includes non-Christians. That includes gays and lesbians. That includes childless cat women. 
So for accuracy, let, let, let me play the clip in which the bishop made these statements. And she looked at them, and but I saw the Madam Vice President in a rally where some people said, Jesus is Lord. And she looked at them and said, you're in the wrong rally. And they tried to sweep it. You, 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 they tried to sweep it under the rug like she wasn't addressing that. But there were two people. One had said that she was telling lies, and the other said, Jesus is Lord. And she addressed them both. She said, you all. Not one of you, y'all are at the wrong rally. You don't believe me. They kept it out of the news. While on the other hand, the other candidate has people singing how great thou art in his rallies. And still a bunch of pimp jack leg preachers who are in bed with the political elite are trying to tell their, their congregations to vote for someone who is against the Judeo-Christian ethic. That devil is a liar and God will determine who's who. You're looking at me like you didn't hear about it. That's why I brought the clip. Show it. Donald Trump hand-selected three members of the United States Supreme Court with, with the intention that they would undo the protections of Roe v. Wade, and they did as he intended. Oh, you guys are at the wrong rally. wasn't what she was addressing she was addressing someone who called her a lie no no no. she was addressing them both she heard someone call her a liar she heard someone say jesus is lord and she says you all are at the wrong rally and then she says you need to go to the smaller one down the street well let me tell you something my sister you need to watch how you deal with god's people in this hour because just because you get elected if you do doesn't mean you'll last god is still the god of heaven and the god that's not a threat i'm a prophet god will do certain things to silence the mouth of mockers now i don't believe the bishop is misinformed i believe he is purposely being hypocritical disrespectful disingenuous and manipulative and i'm going to address or attempt to address at least this point by point so please bear with me First, I, I, I need to address the issue with Pastor Jamal Bryant. I live in Atlanta, Georgia. I was once a member and leader at New Birth Missionary Baptist Church. Now, based on my understanding of scripture and relating to this point, uh, the bishop was out of order. And I'm not saying that because I have some type of allegiance to Pastor Bryant or to New Birth Missionary Baptist Church. I have an allegiance to Christ and his kingdom. To publicly rebuke another believer, particularly a leader, with yourself being a leader, without first addressing them privately is not biblical. Matthew chapter 18 verses 15 and 16 states, Moreover, if your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he hears you, you have gained your brother. But if he will not hear you, take with you one or two more, that by the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word may be established. No wonder so many Americans are becoming fed up with the church. Many of its leaders are behaving like the world. You don't see this type of public display uh, of bickering among Muslim or Jewish leaders. I'm not saying that it don't happen, but it doesn't happen publicly. In the book of James chapter four, verse 11 through 12, it says, do not speak evil of one another, brothers. The one who speaks evil of a brother or judges his brother speaks evil of the law and judges the law. If you judge the law, 
You are not a doer of the law, but a judge of the law. And there is one lawgiver and judge who is able to save and to destroy. But who are you to judge your neighbor? Now, James had been talking about our evil tongue in, in chapter 3, verse 8. And he also talked about the fights and quarrels among brothers. But now he says, brothers, do not slander one another. What is slander? Slander is showing our brother's faults and weaknesses to another person. And since everyone has faults and weaknesses, Slander is often true or partly true. When slander is false, it becomes a false witness. But whether what we say is true or false, to talk about our brother's faults to one another, to another rather, is slander. And slander is a great sin in God's eyes. To slander our brother or sister is to judge them and both are very similar, the slandering and the judging. See, in our hearts and minds, we judge our brothers and sisters, but with our tongues and lips, we slander them. When we judge them, we judge the law, Christ's law. To judge the law means to disobey it. When we do that, we make ourselves greater than the law. When we judge the law, we are saying that some commandments of the law are good and others are bad. We are in effect saying, I will obey this command, but not that. We are saying, if I want to slander or judge my brother, I'll do so. And in this way, we make ourselves judges of the law. Scripture tells us, but there is only one lawgiver and judge. When we judge the law, we are putting ourselves in God's place. And that is a sin. To seek to be like God is the greatest form of pride. It was for this sin that Adam and Eve were driven out of the Garden of Eden. There is only one who is able to save and destroy, namely God himself. Only he gives us salvation or can condemn us to hell. No matter how much we exalt ourselves, we cannot save ourselves. And no matter how much we judge our brothers and sisters, we cannot destroy or condemn them. Only God can save and destroy. And therefore, let us not dare to judge our brothers and sisters. You know, I, I personally feel that pride and a little self-hate uh, may have intertwined somewhere in there because the bishop referred to Vice President Harris as my sister. I say that because the, the event that he was referring to and the capacity in which she was present at the event was not social. This wasn't a family or community barbecue. It was a political campaign event. She was there officially as a presidential candidate and standing in her position as the vice president of the United States of America. And therefore, the bishop was disrespectful to one of the leaders of this nation in which the Bible tells us that we are to honor and pray for. 1 Peter uh, uh, chapter 2, verses 13 through 17 states, Submit yourselves for the Lord's sake to every human authority, whether to the emperor as the supreme authority or to the governors who were sent to him to punish those who do wrong and commend those who do right. For it is God's will that by doing good, you should silence the ignorant talk of foolish people. Live as free people, but do not use your freedom as a cover-up for evil. Live as God's slaves. Show proper respect to everyone. Love the family of believers. Fear God and honor the emperor. Now, unless the bishop receives some divine discernment or revelation regarding Vice President Harris's state of mind, 
regarding what and to whom she was responding to, which I doubt because he would have said so in the same breath he let us know that he was a prophet. You see, you, you cannot say what someone's intentions are or whom or what they were addressing under those situations outside of that discernment. Now, he's free to give his opinion, just like you and I are free to give our opinions. But you didn't, he didn't state it as an opinion. He stated it as a fact. He even accused the media of trying to sweep it under the rug. Now, those young men who came there had a purpose to cause disruption and to uh, heckle her. This was not a town hall. This wasn't a debate. It wasn't a church revival or Christian event. This was a political rally in which a presidential candidate was speaking. To yell out anything, to, 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 to interrupt while anyone is speaking, is rude and disrespectful. I was taught that as a child. Now at Mr. Trump's rallies, he is rude, he is disrespectful, and he is threatening. And that behavior is welcomed at his rallies, I guess, unless you're addressing him <laughs> with the negative comment. But maybe that's why she told them that they were at the wrong rally. They didn't have righteous indignation or righteous intentions. They were trying to heckle her. They came there to stir up trouble, just like a group of Trump supporters did in Houston last week. Come on, really, what was the intent? What was to be gained to shout out liar or, or, or lie or even Jesus is law? What was that supposed to accomplish? Simply to be disruptive. That's all they wanted to do. So let's stop with the religious spin. -off. The Bible declares that everything be done in decency and in order. She, the Vice President of the United States, is up there speaking. Why are they interrupting a lead speaker at a political event if they are there to represent Christ? See, if they were there to, to witness, then the objective they should have had should have been to calmly discuss with others to be listened to and understood so that prayerfully they could reach a point of agreement that, for example, Jesus is Lord. But yelling it out never accomplished that, and it never will. Now, none of the clips I've seen revealed her point of address, okay? What was clear was that she had a speech to deliver, and she addressed the disruption so that she could continue with her assignment. Now, I'm sure if someone uh, was to come into the bishop's church being disrupted, his security team would ask them to leave or drag them out if necessary. So stop with the gaslighting of this for some clicks, likes, and views. And just a reminder, Chuck was cool with the guy yelling, shoot him in response to a question about illegal immigrants. He was adamant that the Central Park Five be quote, made an example of, so much so that he paid for his opinion to be published on a full page in all four of the major New York newspapers. And he was wrong, and to this day he has not apologized. He was cool with the crowd chanting send him back in response to his ramblings on, the, on a congresswoman of color. He was cool with chance of lock her up regarding Hillary Clinton's email. Yet, he wants to cry winch hunt and they're after me regarding the classified documents found in his own home. Now we could talk about his bias of uh, business policies and his failed businesses, his sexism or the scandals he was involved in before his presidency, but hey, that doesn't matter. Even during his presidency and 
after his presidency, but hey, that doesn't matter. He's God's chosen, right? Also, under the, this standard the bishop and others have established in this situation, the bishop should take the same platform and the same microphone and with the same passion rebuke those Christians who play numbers, those who rely on horoscopes, those who gamble, those who lie on their tax returns, those who work for companies that don't adhere to biblical principle. Because you see, in doing so, one could say that they are rejecting God by rejecting his promise to supply all of their needs. <laughs> no, that won't happen. See, what, what many of you actually say regarding those who play numbers is, is that, hey, as long as you pay your tithes, it's okay. Hypocrite. Uh, you know, maybe I guess what, what made it okay and, and, and why the bishop didn't call out Trump when he curses his, heck, his hecklers, uh, calls them names, tell his supporters to beat the hell out of them and he'll pay their lawyer fees, was because the hecklers didn't add Jesus as Lord. Let's be real. We can form our mouths to say anything. God's concern is what's in our hearts. Those who may be familiar with Reverend Jim Jones, uh, he led a group of people to leave the country and ultimately uh, he led them to a mass suicide by drinking Kool-Aid with poison. The Reverend Jim Jones shouted out Jesus is Lord almost every day. Many said he was doing a great work for the Lord. And actually he was a good uh, preacher. I've actually heard him on one occasion. He was doing the Lord's work until he wasn't and the people drank the Kool-Aid. And I wonder if history will repeat itself. You know, in the Amplified Bible, chapter 7, verse 21, 23, it declares this, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name and driven out demons in your name and done many mighty works in your name? And then I will say to them openly, publicly, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who act wickedly, disregarding my command. In that same book, we find this in verses 24 through 27. You blind guides, Filtering, filtering out a gnat and gulping down a camel. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees. This is referring to leaders. Pretenders, hypocrites. For you clean the outside of the cup and of the plate, but within they are full of extortion and grasping self-indulgence. You blind Pharisees, first clean the inside of the cup and of the plate so that the outside may be clean also. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, pretenders, hypocrites, for you are like tombs that have been whitewashed, which look beautiful on the outside, but inside are full of dead men's bones and everything impure. Regarding the reference to the camel and the gnat in this text, the camel was considered unclean. It was one of the largest of unclean animals, whereas the gnat was the smallest of unclean creatures. Now I hear some of you responding with the scripture, well, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Okay. So if the heart is filled with deception at that moment, then regardless of what is formed in the mouth, 
to say the purpose is deception. Religious terminology is often used to cover that which is not religious or good. And since the bishop brought up the music at Trump's rallies, let's talk about that for a bit. The bishop was misleading when he stated that Mr. at Mr. Trump's rallies, they're singing, how great thou art. This is simply not true. I've watched several of his rallies. They have not been singing how great thou art. They have been illegally playing music that they didn't have permission to. That's not Christ-like. They played music from the village people, YMCA. They played a song called It's Ranging Men. That's a little confusing coming from a Trump rally. Anyway. Even if it was true that they were singing How Great Thou Art, it amounts to false worship. Singing How Great Thou Art while robbing the artists of their permission and royalties. Check this out. But sometimes a song will start playing and you'll have no idea why. Yes, that is the song Memories from the Broadway musical Cats, playing at a rally for President Donald Trump. We weren't the only ones confused. Is that a song from Cats playing behind you, by the way? <laughs> I believe it is. The explanation? We can't really give you one, but we can tell you that Trump has voiced his love for Broadway composer Andrew Lloyd Webber before. Broadway star Betty Buckley, who sang Memories in the original production of Cats, doesn't reciprocate that love and said the president's use of the song at rallies was terrible. The president reportedly picks and takes a lot of pride in the music played at his rallies. Other songs we heard include Backstreet Boys' I Want It That Way, Celine Dion's My Heart Will Go On, and Rihanna's Don't Stop the Music. It's a wide-ranging collection of music, to say the least. But like Memories and Betty Buckley, not every artist is okay with their songs being played. Musicians like Elton John of the Rolling Stones and Queen, as well as the estates of George Harrison and Luciano Pavarotti, have each denounced Trump's use of their music at rallies. Rihanna wasn't aware her song was being used until Sunday, after a reporter pointed it out on Twitter. She responded by saying, not for much longer, which raises the question, can musicians actually stop politicians from using their songs at rallies. Let's say rallies are properly licensed. Can artists still take legal action if they don't want their songs to be played? Yes. ASCAP notes that campaigns can be liable for damaging the image of an artist, diluting the trademark of the artist's name, or implying artists' endorsement. Because of these liabilities and risks, ASCAP suggests that campaigns seek direct permission from artists and their management on top of the public performance licenses. If campaigns don't, they might have to face the truth. Artists, including Isaac Hayes, Abba, Foo Fighters, Beyonce and others have rejected their music being illegally used at Trump rallies. The latest to join the group is noted Canadian-American singer-songwriter Rufus Wainwright. He criticized Trump's campaign after his version of Leonard Cohen's Fame Praise to Life, Hallelujah, was used at a rally in Pennsylvania, calling it, and I quote, the height of blasphemy. Wainwright said Hallelujah was, quote, an anthem dedicated to peace, love, and acceptance of the truth. He said he was mortified after seeing it played at the rally. Finally, on this point, really, what what is this all about? You know, really playing Christian songs or singing a Christian song at a rally anyway. What does it mean if the song, what does it mean if when the song is over, you speak and declare and decree over the people hate, lies, and violence? Now I'm from New Jersey, New York, and I'm very familiar with Trump and his business dealings as well as some of his business failure. His actions and words on a daily basis reveal 
he opposes biblical teachings in my point of view. So someone tell me what policies does Trump plan to implement that are so biblical? I mean, what insight do you have? Because I haven't heard him mention any policies, to be honest. I know he has concepts. He has never spoken or acted publicly that like I've seen and heard, which would indicate that he has any biblical value, only to play on the sentiment of Christian. But because he says he's against abortion, and because those who are pushing him forward knew that that statement would excite many Christians. And now you're all for closing your eyes and ears to all else he says and does. At least Vice President Harris is a church member and has a pastor's cover. What church does Mr. Trump belong to? Who is Mr. Trump's pastor? I'm not talking about having a spiritual advisor. I'm talking about a pastor that he submitted to, a church that he supports and, and serves. To me, in all of this, the bishop was reaching. See, you, you tear down one person of personality for supporting certain things, but you support and defend a person in part that not only supports, but is racist, is a sexual abuser, is a convicted felon. That's just hard for me to understand. On another point, some people are supporting the, the bishop's rebuke as him standing up for righteousness. Well, According to Baker Encyclopedia of the Bible, righteousness is defined as conformity to a certain set of expectations which vary from role to role. Righteousness is the fulfillment of the expectations in any relationship, whether with God or with other people. Depending on the fulfillment of one's expectations, an individual could be called righteous or his or her acts and speech could be designated as righteous. Now, the opposite of righteous is evil, wicked, wrongdoing. According to the facts as I understand them, the bishop's comments were wrong. So how can they be righteous? It is dangerously irresponsible for those who are leaders in the body of Christ to demonize and resort to name calling other Christians who have different political views. It is also irresponsible to cause division in your own faith over politics. You know, it's bad enough the church has division over theological beliefs and concepts and uh, denominations, but over politics? Really? Well, what say you? This is the end of part one. Uh, this is going to be a two-part series. So please join me next week for part two. I hope you enjoyed the ride today. Uh, uh, please hit the subscribe and notification buttons and revisit our channel for more engaging and enlightening content. And if you want to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, please click on the button above labeled Prayer of Salvation or in the link in the description section below. Otherwise, thank you for spending some of your time with me. And please, again, take a second to like this post. But as always, peace and blessings to you and your household.